Hello, I'm Jesse Grimes, and I'm here at the Ant Village of Wheaton Laboratories. Right now I'm going to give you a, a little video walkthrough of Wolfati 0.7, also known as Allerton Abbey. This is the first Wolfati that was built here at Wheaton Labs. Um, and right now it's actually undergoing a major renovation, so it's a bit of a construction site. But um, I'll give you a walkthrough and show you what we're doing, and, and I'll give you a little idea of what this place looks like. Right here, this is walking in down the uh, main road that comes in. This is the uphill side of Allerton Abbey. As you can see, the whole thing is covered in earth. It's already got its umbrella, its first layer of earth for the thermal mass, an insulative thermal umbrella, um, and then another layer of soil on top. So as you can see, once this whole structure is covered in dirt, it's going to be quite invisible, not only from above, but from most sides, except for the front and back. All you're going to see is little things sticking up out of the, for the chimney, but uh, once you get a lot of growies growing on here, it'll kind of just look like a hill full of bushes. And uh, that's, that's part of the magic of the Wafati is it just kind of blends into the natural landscape of the forest. Which is a really good aesthetic that uh, we're going for here at Weedon Labs and an aesthetic that a lot of people appreciate. And so walking down this path, this comes to the uphill patio. And this is where you can see Travis and Bill over here. They're working on replacing this wall with a straw bale wall for better insulation. And the whole idea of this Wolfati concept is that it won't need a heater or a cooler. The heat of the summer will be stored in thermal mass behind these walls all around the house. And in the summer or in the winter time that heat will bleed back into the house and keep everybody warm. So this is walking through the uphill door. Right now this place is being used as a kitchen and kind of a community house for all the ants and gaffers that are here with Travis. So this is just, a, it's kind of a T-shaped house as you can see he's walked through the door. The top of the T is here on the uphill side and then the bottom of the T is down there a little bit lower. And so this is kind of a bedroom area here. Um, there's going to be a big window in this space. A large door here and then over here right now we're using this as our kitchen. But it's also um, a bedroom. For the first winter, there's a family of five living in here. And so there's lots of bunks. And as you go down here, this is the kitchen area. Or what was the kitchen area. It's already been renovated. Um, I built this downhill wall here. This is a straw bill wall as well. And it's already been cobbed up and almost finished. It just needs its final uh, plaster layer. And the door, obviously. Yeah, this is our, our kitchen area. We'll put our, our kitchen down here. We've got a drain pipe leading to the wall so we can drain water out. And this whole room, the idea is to plaster all the walls and paint them all, or not paint them, but whitewash them a light color so it brings more light into this room. And this here um, is a rocket mass heater. Or it was a rocket mass heater. And the mass was running, the floor. this floor here is the mass. But it's just been... Um, it's the rocket mass heater innovator event right now and some of the innovators have just turned it into a heater to optimize it kind of make it work better because it didn't work very well before so right now it's just a kind of an l-tube batch box heater um, with an added barrel for more radiant radiant heat and then it just kind of goes out out the flue and out the out the uphill wall yeah the important thing to note is that the only reason this heater is here is because the building is not quite finished yet. We haven't finished the insulation thermal umbrella and cut off all those conductive loops. So the building hasn't had a chance to charge with heat for the summertime. And so this heater is just here to make it livable in the winter. And then once the building is finished, once everything, all the conductive paths are shut off, it shouldn't need a heater. So we might be able to take this out. And then this is the downhill wall. This is kind of our dishes area, and a lot of stuff has just been moved back here to make room for construction. But um, like I said, I built this. This wall here looked like the front wall before, and it's been replaced with a straw bale and cob wall. And then this deck has been built, as well as an umbrella, another insulation thermal umbrella that extends out from that downhill wall out to about this, this level here at this wall and down about five, six feet. And that'll help to isolate the thermal mass behind this, behind the walls of the structure. 
Um, back here as well, there needs to be another drip edge added on here, and the rest of the dirt needs to be added on to the structure to finish it. And then, as you can see, once this is all covered in dirt, it's going to be pretty invisible from most angles. If you walk over this way, you know, once that's all covered in dirt, it'll kind of just look like a hill. So you got your downhill patio down here, your uphill patio up there, that's where I started the video. A nice little Wolfati house, and uh, once we get it all closed up this winter, uh, we're going to do a test on whether or not the annualized thermal inertia concept will keep this place a little warmer than it is outside. So we'll talk a little bit more about how this uh, concept of annualized thermal, thermal inertia works. Um, so like I said, there is a, a, a insulation thermal umbrella surrounding this entire house. So basically you've got the house built with the logs. On top of that is about two feet of dirt on top of the roof and about 15 feet of dirt on the sides of the walls under this whole thing that's covered. And that acts as your thermal mass. And then on top of that goes a layer of insulation and then some sort of water barrier. Here we're using recycled billboards um, as a tarp. Many layers of those to create a barrier for the water. And what that does is that keeps your, your whole thermal mass, your big chunk of earth underneath that insulation watershed umbrella. It'll keep that dry and so it can act as a heat storage because if you have water in there it'll just pull the heat right out. It'll lick the, the heat right out as the water moves away. And so you've got your, your thermal mass and then you got your insulation umbrella and then you have another about another two feet of dirt over top of that and that acts as a moderator from the outside temperatures between the insulation and, and the negative 20 degrees that we get here in Montana. And so, like I said, that's, there's that big, huge mass of dirt. It extends behind, and that mass of dirt extends behind this wing wall here. And part of the renovation that we've been doing here is we insulated that wing wall. We stuffed wool in between the logs, and then we cobbed over it. And so what that's doing is insulating the mass that is behind that wall, our heat storage, our thermal mass, insulating that from the outside temperatures here. And so the reason that we've been doing this renovation and replacing these walls with straw bale walls is similar to what we did to the wing wall here. We wanted to insulate that mass from the outside air. And then from the inside air during the wintertime when we want it to be 70 degrees inside of that house, we, want, we need to insulate that wall from the cold air outside. So it was just a stick wall with normal insulation. It was kind of just closed up really quick before winter because the family was living in it and they needed to close it up. And now we're going back and replacing it with 14 inches of straw and about 6 inches of cob, making a very super insulated wall to keep the heat inside the house from bleeding right out through that wall to the cold air of wintertime. And so basically what you're trying to do is cut out any conductive paths for, for heat to conduct out. Um, I talked about that umbrella that was built under this deck here. That umbrella extends about 15 feet out from the house. And so any heat that's in the house, it'll have to conduct through 15, 20 feet of dry earth before it can get to the negative 20 below temperatures outside. And so it's going to take six months for it to travel that far through that conductive path. And after six months, it's warm again, it's summer. And then the great thing is in the summertime, all of your heat in that mass has been lost during the wintertime. So in the summer, your mass is cold and it's drawing heat out of the house. So you let the hot, you open the windows, you open the doors, you let the hot air of the summertime into the house, and the walls will just pull the heat right out of it, and the house will be way cooler inside than it is outside. It can be 100 degrees outside. Inside the house, it's 65, 70 degrees. 